Brian Belsky joins us now. Um, you heard from him the other day, and he gave you his macro view, but he's actually rebalanced his book, um, and he has a number of new buys and sells. So, Brian, let's go through these. Good to see you, and thanks for coming back on to share these with our viewers. In terms of your large cap discipline value fund, you bought Boston Properties, Disney, Fifth Third, Goldman, Merck, Qualcomm, Regions, U.S. Bank Corp. I think it's very interesting that you bought a bunch of regional banks, which were the center of the storm some six months ago, but here we are. Tell me about those first, the regional bank moves that you made getting in to those. Well, thanks so much for having us, and, and you're being very righteous and, and nice to Steve today. It's a tough day for him. Um, <laughs> you know, we're using, <laughs> we we're funding some of this by selling Netflix. We bought Netflix in June of, of last year as an opportunistic value call of, of 2022. I'm sorry, it's up 171%. So we're funding some of that. And as you know, uh, we've been big bank believers for a long time. And we just want to diversify out a little bit, especially given the fact that if you take a look at price correlations and valuations and yields, uh, Bank of America, Berkshire, and the brokerages look very good. And J.P. Morgan, we're using some J.P. Morgan to, to fund some of this. And I also think, too, uh, of our theme of everything in moderation, own a little bit of everything, it's time to start looking at some of these regional banks that we think are very well positioned over the next few years. So you, aside from that, I mean, the, the buying Goldman, buying City. And selling J.P. Morgan, what's the thought process behind that? <laughs> well, okay. So if you take a look at, let's just talk about banks and the correlations and and, uh, and how J.P. Morgan trades relative to Bank of America in Berkshire. We're already covered there. And Citigroup, from a value perspective, uh, the cheapest stock on a P.E. basis, f almost a five percent dividend yield. I love what Jane Frazier's doing over there in terms of reorganization. You want to buy a big bank like that when they're cutting costs. They brought in great management like Andy Sieg from, from Merrill Lynch and Bank of America. I really, really like that play. And I really think it's a contrarian bank. If you talk to a lot of the big institutions, they've shied from that and they've uh, invested in Jamie. And Jamie has done a wonderful job. It's up 16 percent this year. Citigroup's still down, or it's actually just up 2 percent. So, you know, you want to be able to go where I think the opportunity is going forward. And we're already covered in the big bank, in the really big money center banks, like let's call it Bank of America and Berkshire. And why'd you buy Disney? <laughs> well, uh, we've been on the network and, uh, in, and talking about Disney. We were really early in our tactical portfolio by buying Disney. I still think Bob is going to get this thing right. He's going to create some sort of a scarcity proposal for Disney. He's already talked about cutting content and cutting the Marvel films. Only one is coming out next year. So I think I like management teams. I was a little early buying Disney in my tactical portfolio. But I think in communication services, as we want to play more of a barbell with respect to the high growers like Netflix and Google, and on the other side, some of the, some of the traditional telecom stocks like AT&T and Verizon, we think Disney's in a sweet spot. So I'm, I'm probably a little bit contrarian here, but I really like, I believe in Bob Iger. Um, some of the other moves that I, that I think are, are interesting here. So you bought Qualcomm, you sold Cisco. Um, I want yep. you to tell us why, and then I want Jimmy to, to comment on that. Well, I think Cisco may be in, uh, over its skis a little bit on, on the cybersecurity side of things. They may have overpaid, and I think the, the stock has slipped a little bit. Cisco is a great value name within, within um, the technology sector. I think Qualcomm is a little bit better value. Plus, what we're doing in our overall semiconductor position, Scott, for 2024 is while we're going to remain kind of core positions in Apple and Microsoft, I think with NVIDIA and AMD, what we're trying to do is play more of a barbell. So for every AMD position, we want to match it up with a Qualcomm. And for every NVIDIA position, we want to match it up with a Broadcom. That's why we added uh, Qualcomm.